my name's Neil. Uh, it's my first LGM. Um, I'm an artist and technologist from Oxford in the UK. Uh, I also, over the last couple of years, have been working as part of a group called Digital Prisoners, making interactive spaces and projections. So the sort of thing we've been doing is like uh, this large-scale projection on a building, fairly large-scale. Um, you might be wondering, possibly, hopefully, what those two shapes are. They're actually people. Um, so what we did in this public space is had two infrared cameras picking up people, one person in either side of a square, and then projecting, and they could basically interact with an environment projected on the building. So this is our real-time projection. And then, completely the other end of the scale, uh, most recent project we did was an interactive for uh, a museum. And this is, we've got quite an interest in the history of projection. This is a contemporary twist on a magic lantern. So uh, we've got various interactives in there, uh, interactive sensors. <coughs> and we crowdsourced um, people doing selfie videos and made slides, except they were RFID tagged and they would start off projections. So what both of those projects have in common is that they were built with Praxis Live, which is uh, our own software. A uh, hybrid visual IDE for creative coding, or hybrid visual IDE for live creative coding, which is something I'll get to. So, there's going to be some coding in this, hopefully. So this is one of the demo projects that will start up if you, uh, in the examples project. talk over it. So what we have there is some audio going on which is triggering um, some GPU shaders doing some interesting things, spinning things around in 3D. This is, if I open the two files that relate to this, it's really tiny on this screen. So we basically have um, a visual node graph of components which we can edit live to create this. So that's the audio patch that's running there, and that's the video patch. So to give you an idea of uh, the environment and how to use it, I'll move to something that's a little bit simpler. Uh, so I need to restart this hub. So. I hope you can see that better than I can see this on here. Um, so here we have a very simple example project, which is just iterating through a folder of images to do a simple slideshow. So these are all built-in components that come in with the, the software. And so on this, that was not intention. Uh, so we've got a palette of components on this side here, uh, and each of these come built in. However, the problem that, in a way, Praxis Live is trying to solve is the fact that any sort of high-level patcher program like this is um, what happens if the built-in components don't do what you want them to do. So each of the components on here, um, you can edit the code of. So Praxis Live actually wraps processing as a library. So you can see that the code for this component is based on processing code. This is going to get awkward. <laughs> Thank you. 
So uh, rather than edit one of the built-in components, I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, here so we can bring in custom component like that connected to the screen. At the moment it does nothing. So if you've used processing you should find this vaguely familiar. And we <coughs> come on. So basically the practice live runtime embeds a compiler so you can write components on the fly. Is that now working? No. It's all right, I'll just code some stuff. You can see how it works, then I can talk. So we, we can do various bits of pro processing code in here. Um, as you can see, where we've got two inputs, it's doing additive blending, so we'll take that out of the way for now. And we go back to the code. So it uses familiar processing types, such as P image. Um, so maybe we would draw that image. In order to get a, to link this into our visual programming side, we use annotations. So we do that. And see, we've now got an input port, and if I connect those two together, we're now drawing our image back on the uh, one of the uh, cheats, like then copy this over. <coughs> The other thing we can do is rotate our image. And this is, obviously the rotation at the moment is baked into the code. So as well we can use property annotation. Go back to our, and we now have a property which we can set here. Now, this means once we've exposed the property to the environment, it means you can connect MIDI, OSC, GUI control. You can take uh, input from one source and immediately connect it to your code graphically. Uh, and as well as that, we can, if we tell this, let me do. So we tell it it has a range, and we can now just use that as a slider. Uh, and one other simple example with this is we can annotate a method. set up a simple animation for our image and um, we've now got a, a rotate port as well so we can connect the timer to that thanks we've now got it so that's what we're doing we've now got a simple transition right five minutes so it can get more complicated than this obviously so Uh, if you've ever used processing, you may have seen this example in, uh, or a variation of this example in their examples. So you can create three-dimensional shapes. Um, so again, the code for this we can redefine. 
do something simple. Just change the resolution of the shape on the fly. And you'll see the source of this is actually a GL shader. Which is this component. So we can also actually edit the fragment shaders. So there's an editor for fragment shaders as well. And we have so built in G streamer so we can do simple things like play play familiar trailers. Uh, but of course we don't we could decide we want to actually just input that into our three dimensional shape. Um, so we can you guys on the screen there. Yeah. Map you to a three-dimensional shape, if we wish. Uh, let's try that quickly. Uh, and we'll bring that in there. And one thing, in terms of using this as a live coding, if you want to show your code, as is typical now, how to use GStreamer, we can literally bring our environment in, see the code behind our shape. So if you look on uh, Praxis Live Twitter feed, or it was retweeted by LGM last week, there is actually about a 10 minute video of me doing some three dimensional live coding in the environment. Uh, how long have I got? One minute. One other thing, as it's a graphics conference, I won't talk about audio, but you can live code audio DSP uh, as well. Um, you basically uh, live code lots of different data processing. Uh, and we have, finally, bindings to, I don't know if anyone has heard of a German project called Tinkerforge. It's an open hardware project with, I like this because I can't solder, um, clip together sensors, motors, controllers, that sort of thing. Uh, so here I've just got a very simple connected uh, infrared sensor. So I'll just quickly build this project. So again, you use the graph editor, but can it change the code of these? So this is our, this is the code binding this distance sensor. Uh, and I'm sending this to the video patch. So if I run this, and then we go. <laughs> this is the crowd pleasing video. It's particularly good with kids. <laughs> so, um, projects there, the web address is there. Uh, there is a fairly usable manual uh, linked to on there, it's fairly well documented. Uh, if anyone is interested in using or helping to maybe develop plugins. Plugins are literally you copy and paste out a bit of process and sketch code you've done in there. Uh, or anything else, please come and talk to me. Great, great, awesome. Um, we have, yeah, yeah, he deserves it. <laughs>